Hey guys, and welcome back to one of these grade 5 to grade 9 full walkthroughs for kind of the different topics that we have. And in this topic, we're going to specifically talk about equations of tangents. However, inside that, we're actually going to also be talking about um, essentially perpendicular lines, which is exactly what a tangent is. Okay? In the sense that a tangent is, if you have a circle like this, it's a line that meets the circle at only one point. So it doesn't go through it, okay? But we're going to be dealing with perpendicular lines, and I'll show you why soon. So this is mainly a grade 8 and 9 question, okay? But again, it will help you with perpendicular lines. Once again, the questions are in the description, so you're more than welcome to have a go right now, or go through these, kind of go through the video first, just so you can kind of get aware of the topic, and then do these questions at a later date, just to see if you've retained anything, just to get some extra practice. But let's get started without further ado. So a circle has center 2, 5, and the point A, 11, 8 lies on the circumference. So what I like to do in literally every single question I do when it comes to something like this, is I personally like to draw a little diagram. So that center here is 2, comma, 5. And we have the point A. <laughs> Wait, what I can do actually, I'm going to do something fairly... What I want to do is just move it down ever so slightly. Imagine that's touching. It doesn't actually matter that much. And that point is 11, 8. So how do we find the equation of a tangent? Especially because we only have one coordinate, right? Well, we technically have two, but we only have one that's along the line, right? And if you remember, the equation of a straight line is just y is equal to mx plus c. We can't really work out c, and we can't really work out m just yet. However, if you remember your circle theorems, this is the radius of the um, circle. The radius will always be perpendicular to a tangent, which means if I work out the gradient of the radius, I can then inverse it in order to find the gradient of the tangent. So I'm going to call it MR. That just means gradient of the radius. And what you do is you do the change in Y. So that's 8 minus 5, because the Y coordinates are 8 and 5, over 11 minus 2. So what that gives me is it gives me 3 over 9, which of course is just equal to a third. Okay? Cool. Which means the gradient of the tangent, you flip the fraction so it becomes 3 over 1, and you change the sign. So if it was negative, it becomes positive. If it was positive, it becomes negative. So in other words, it's minus 3. That's the only additional step that you need to do in these 4 plus mark questions. Now, again, we can work out what plus c is simply by uh, subbing in the coordinates for a. We have to do a because it has to be a coordinate that lies on the line itself. And that's basically what you're going to do in every single one of these questions. So it's not too bad in my opinion. Of course, there are some curveballs they can sh uh, throw at you, which I'm definitely going to go through shortly. But for the most part, that's all we've got to do. So we have 8 equals minus 33 plus C, which means C, if we add 33 to both sides, would be 41. So my actual equation now is Y is equal to minus 3X plus 41. And that is it for my answer. Not too bad. So sometimes you'll have questions that kind of break it down a bit further in this case. Now, write down the coordinates of the center of the circle. In GCSE, whenever you're given the actual equation of a circle, the center is always 0, 0, 100% of the time. It then says work out the exact length of the radius. So here's how the equation of a circle looks like, right? x squared plus y squared, which tells you the center is 0, 0, and it's always going to be 0, 0 for GCSE, okay? equals r squared. So this is the radius squared. So basically the exact length of the radius is just the square root of 5. And of course, it's only the positive values because it's a length. It says point P12 is uh, is on the circle, right? So again, work out the equation of a tangent. Okay, I'm going to draw the circle. The center is 0, 0. And the tangent, let's say, is somewhere over here. And that point is 1, comma, 2. So once again, we have a perpendicular line. We work out the gradient of the radius. Change in y, so that's 2 over 1, the change in x. Because if you notice, it's going to be 2 minus 0 over 1 minus 0. It's just 2 over 1, which is just 2. 
which means the gradient of the tangent is going to be, so remember 2 is 2 over 1, flip the fraction becomes 1 over 2 and make it negative. So the equation now is just y equals minus a half x plus c. Sub in the coordinates that you have, 1 and 2. So we've got 2 is equal to minus a half 1 plus c. So 2 is equal to minus a half plus c. Add a half to both sides and you basically see is 2.5 which is equal to 5 over 2. Right? If you write it as a fraction, which means our final equation is just y is equal to minus a half x plus 5 over 2. Okay? So again, very similar kind of question. So now, what if it gives you something that looks like this? It says, find the equation of the tangent to the circle at 3, 4. So looking here, once again, we have basically a, a straight line going along here. Again, the actual kind of look of the diagram doesn't matter too much. And in this case, they haven't given me a coordinate, so to speak, right? Instead, I can read it off if I needed to. And again, we're going to work out the gradient of the radius, right? So the gradient of the radius, since the center is at zero, it goes from zero to four. So that's just four minus zero, which is four, over three minus zero, three. So the gradient of the tangent, flip the fraction, and you swap the sign around. So instead of plus, it becomes minus. So again, we have y is equal to minus 3 quarters x plus c. The coordinates I have are 3, 4. So x is 3, y is 4. So we have 4 is equal to minus 3 over 4, 3 plus c. So that gives me 4 is equal to minus 9 over 4 plus c. So c is equal to 4 plus 9 over 4, which is going to be 25 over 4. If you're unsure how I got that, Basically, 4 as a fraction is 4 over 1 times the top and bottom by 4. We get 16 over 4. 16 over 4 plus 9 over 4 is 25 over 4. So my actual equation is minus 3 quarters x plus 25 over 4. Okay. And the last one, in this case from the Edexcel 2022 paper, so last year, we have the center of a circle is a point with coordinates one, minus 1, 3, the point A lies in that, and then we need to find the equation of a tangent. I believe I've actually already done this question, but again, it's the same kind of method. I would always recommend drawing a little diagram out just to make it kind of easier for you to visualize exactly what's happening. So 6, 8, let's just say it's that point here. Like that. Okay? So again, the gradient of the radius is the change in y, so 8 minus 3, over 6 minus minus 1 equals 5 over 7. So the gradient of the tangent, therefore, is just going to be minus, make it negative, flip the fraction. So my equation so far is minus 7 fifths x plus c. Sub in the two coordinates, x equals 6 and y equals 8. So 8 is equal to minus 7 fifths 6 plus c. Expand that, we get 8 is equal to 6 times 7, which is 42. So minus 42 over 5 plus c. So c is equal to 8 plus 42 over 5, which is going to be 82 over 5. So my equation at the moment is y is equal to minus 7 fifths x plus 82 over 5, but would you be surprised to know that that isn't my final answer? Because if you look at the answer, we need an ax plus by plus c equals 0, where a, b, and c are integers. They need to be whole numbers. So to do that, I'm going to times the whole thing through by 5, because that's the denominator of both of my fractions. We're left with 5y equals minus 7x plus 82. Move everything to the left-hand side and write it in ax plus by plus c. So move the 7x over, so we get 7x plus 5y minus 82 equals 0. And that's all you really have to do. In terms of the different styles of question, they're very similar each time, so make sure you read what form they want to give it to you. Hopefully you got those questions right, but again, if you didn't, give it a few days and then try again, and you should notice that you get more of them right, okay? But don't do it right after the video, because then you're kind of using your memory as opposed to using the skills needed to answer this question. But anyways, I hope you have a great day, and I hope your version is going well.